Well, hi everybody. A um, uh, little bit of a difference today. Um, and uh, it's just myself and uh, a strange gentleman. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so sitting next to me is, uh, well, firstly, welcome to uh, another Mansfield Today show. Uh, my name is Len from NAG Magazine and uh, bringing you all things technology and um, gaming. And yeah, we couldn't wait to showcase you or show you today's uh, a bit of tech. And that is with robotics and coding. And um, this is why we have Duncan sitting here in the studio. Uh, Duncan, hi. Thanks for coming through, man. Hello, Len. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. It's really exciting to be here and to be able to talk about one of the subjects that I really love and enjoy and hope I can get more people interested in it. Yeah, well, I'm sure I'm sure that's, that we're heading in that direction, right? Yeah, What's it's life without robotics and coding. <laughs> Tell us a bit about you and, and where you come from. So my background's not really robotics related. Um, I studied developmental sociology, a bit of child psychology, and then ended up doing my Fogasa level one and became a field guide. And now I work at a PBO called Care for Education. We are a Lego Foundation partner. We've been around for quite a few years and we are making a huge impact in the country, uh, teaching children and teachers how to use Lego in an educational way. I'm one of the top experts on EV3 robotics here in South Africa. Um, internationally, I am a head judge for the World Robot Olympiad, which is one of the biggest robotics competitions in the world. And it's one of the things I think we're going to chat about today. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, through my years in, in gaming, and I've, I've been involved in gaming since 1998, <laughs> um, you know, telling people that, that gaming is a thing and... and um, along with that is education um, you know uh, gamification is the term and for parents out there if you've heard the word gamification this is exactly why mm -hmm. duncan is here and and robotics and and the world robotics olympiad and and your kids getting involved in building robots and coding them and um, competing on an international level is exactly what lego and care for education um, does and so uh, the world robotics olympiad final uh, we just had it a couple of weeks ago um, and in the studio next door we've got a, um, a bunch of um, youngsters, South Africans, who competed in the final and we've got one of the robots here and we're going to show that to uh, the audience a little bit later on. Um, tell us about the World Robotics Olympiad. How do kids get involved with this? Um, explain WRO. So the World Robot Olympiad is one of the biggest robotics competitions in the world. There's over 70 countries that participate every year. And there's thousands or hundreds of thousands of teams that will compete every year just building their robots, having a lot of fun. And what's special about the WRO for me is that it allows children from different age groups to remain a little bit separated. By that I mean they can compete against children with the same skill level as they have. They can compete with children who have the same kind of thinking that they have. So you don't have this eight-year-old really facing off against a 19-year-old who's working through MIT, for example. But what it allows children to do is be creative in their designs. With robotics, there's not just one solution for a problem. There's multiple solutions. And within the, robot, the World Robot Olympiad, there are many different challenges that children can participate in. Um, there's different regular categories, for example. There's an open category, which is a theme-based competition where children will get a theme and then develop a robot around that theme to try and solve problems that they have around the world. For example, recycling or energy use that they now have. Um, within the category that I'm specifically involved in, it's what we call a table challenge. And that is children receive a set of challenges at the start of the year, normally around the 15th of January every year. And then they have until our national finals to prepare their robots to complete that challenge. They have about two minutes when the robot's running to complete it all. And these kids will work for hours, days, weeks, months on these challenges mm -hmm. to the point where I've seen eight-year-old children who have been diagnosed with ADHD sitting for five, six hours in front of a computer, testing their robots, making sure that they're all running. And for a lot of these children, it's a way to really express themselves through their robots. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand just how much work they put into these things and the benefits that they receive from just playing with robotics, really. Mm, mm. Um, that's my take on WRO. That sounds amazing. Um, you mentioned tabletop. Um, explain a, a, 
lay men's turn. Mm. Uh, what size is it? Is it pool table size? Uh, what is the, What does the general layout look like? Yeah, so it's it's about the size of a pool table. It's two point three meters by one point two meters, and on that table you will have what we call the robotics mat. So every year there is a new mat or layout that's released a that landscape. gets printed. Yeah, a landscape, the terrain that the robot needs to move in. And within that terrain, there are various what we call elements on the table, and these are normally built out of Lego. So you've got a Lego robot moving Lego things, and there'll be different colors, different tasks. There's a randomization that will happen on the table. So some of the elements will be known before they start. Most of it, the children have to basically build a very simple AI to try and figure out how to move these elements, depending on what input the robot will receive, so what the robot will see. And within the category with the team that we have next door here, they are in probably the most difficult category in the world, which we call senior high. And it is for your older age groups and your older children. And the things that these children are able to do is mind blowing. It always blows me away every year when I see these robots coming out to complete these table challenges. And the exciting thing is they have two minutes to complete the entire challenge. And we have some teams that will take the full two minutes, and you have some teams in other countries that will take maybe 20, 30 seconds to complete this really sophisticated challenge. Ex and give us an example of one of the obstacles. So the obstacles can be all like kinds of different hole. things. Yeah. So <laughs> they, will they be water? <laughs> it's normally walls that they were looking at. A gotcha. few years ago, they had um, physical pieces of wood and things that the robot would have to climb over ramps. Okay. Um, but now they've made everything out of Lego. So you'll have gotcha. these Lego walls that sit on the table, which the robot must not touch most of the time. Uh -huh. And these things will avoid it using sensors. You then have lines across the table that the robot can then navigate on. They don't have to. This is the thing that I think a lot of people don't really understand is that when you are on your table, you can get your robot to do anything. Uh -huh. You can have it throw things across the table if you want to. You can have it smash things into walls if you want to. It's all up to how the kids want to solve that specific challenge. Yeah, yeah. And all of them are built out of Lego. Um, they're all within a specific restriction of about 15, 20 centimeters. They'll never be higher than that okay. because the robots have a res size restriction of 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. So based on the challenges, they may decide to put wheels on their robot. They may decide to have it more um, spider-like, I guess. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, gamification, as I said, is, is a thing and, and um, getting kids to start from an early age and, and, and have fun and, and, and learn um, is, is incredible and it bodes well for uh, job creation um, and the kind of, kinds of jobs that these kids are going to get involved with going, on, going forward. Um, you touched on ADHD and I'm, I'm so, so excited that you did that. Um, uh, or, uh, parents um, are so often... Um, numb with with all the noise from uh, uh, various teachers and whatnot saying the kids must go on on medication and um, when there's a potential easier solution and um, you know keeping kids busy um, is certainly in our view um, very much that um, so not that we are prescribing any medication mm. or anything but <laughs> that's for sure um, we are robotic nerds and that's that right so, yes all right so um, let's say a school is uh, not involved in robotics and coding um, they in an area where uh, the funding is, is a problem um, are there solutions that that Lego have for schools that are uh, not as affluent um, as, as some of the um, more lucky schools yeah, so, the, so we at Care for Education, we run some different programs. We do have our own robotics projects where we're running in Atchville Township, for example. We have about 200 students that on a daily basis will be playing with these robots and competing within WRO. Um, from a financial side, there is quite a bit of backing from a lot of different companies that you can find. Guys who just want to set up in their garage, for example, can always find something somewhere. But within the World Rob Robot Olympiad, what's just happened, I believe, is that they're starting this creation of a World Robot Olympiad Academy. And this is going to be something that will be all about outreach, helping children get more involved in robotics, where previously they couldn't. Um, the only things you really need to start robotics is have the robotics kit, which you can get through multiple places. Uh, you can then just need the, the table and the mat. That's it. It's, it's that simple. Um, 
something to program on is pretty helpful, especially when you're having to code these little things. Mm -hmm. But there is some support. I know that we've got a few things running with um, different government institutions where they're looking at robotics. A lot of the schools are moving it into a extramural activity that will be happening. And it's all focused on, a lot of it's focused on WRO or World Robot Olympiad in South Africa, but there are also other robotics outlets that, that, will, be not, uh, that okay. will be used. Well, I'd very much like for um, um, our man behind the scenes, Jared, to, uh, in the links, put down um, uh, some information on how people can get hold of uh, Care for Education and, and uh, get involved with um, robotics and coding, um, if, uh, if that's okay with you. So if you yeah. could share that with us. Um, and then uh, lastly, um, it's, it, what I understand uh, from a coding perspective is that um, kids that, that uh, want to get involved don't necessarily need to understand that they're going to sit with a, with a physical robot in front of them. Um, it could start from just Lego, right? So yeah. it's, it's the Lego, that's just why Lego is, is so involved in coding and robotics because your kid sitting and playing Duplo and putting blo blocks together, mm. that's the basics of coding, right? Yes, yeah. So um, I know for a lot of people it might be difficult to kind of connect the, the Duplo blocks to someone actually building a robot that's moving autonomously, um, but this is exactly what Care for Education is doing, right? Yes. So, um, yeah, so we'll share the links in the, uh, uh, the, in the video and um, and I, I'm very very keen to meet meet the kids uh, before we go and meet the kids um, tell us about these kids that are here w what school they're from uh, what did they do how did they how did they perform at the uh, WRO final that took place now last week so, and what were the challenges because yeah. we're in COVID now yeah. um, <laughs> it's 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 it, it was supposed to be a physical event it landed up being a, a virtual event I mean I got goosebumps, guys. Let me tell you something. It's 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 what happened. What had to happen behind the yeah. It, it, it's real. <laughs> but what happened behind the scenes on putting a virtual event together was crazy. And you were yeah. one of the head judge, head judges, or are one of the head judges. Um, explain a little bit about that, and then we'll wrap up and then go and meet the kids. So the World of Olympiad this year ran, as you said, online. Um, there were fifty-four teams in each category or in each age group category. So our South African team, it was their first time going through to an international competition. They are from the Alpha Robotics Club at Kira Aurora. It's one of the biggest robotics clubs that we have here in South Africa. And it's one of my personal favorites. I have a soft spot for them because that's where I've basically started. You need to remain unbiased. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. With this club, they've done some incredible things. They've gone from strength to strength, and the kids that we have here today, um, I've seen them at every competition since I think they were in grade four. And now they're sitting in high school. I believe the one, uh, one, one child will be going into matric next year. And it's just been such a, a, an honor for me to see them develop in the ways that they have, both in their attitude towards each other, the things that they're doing, but also just their passion for robotics, engineering, science, mathematics, these things that we want children in South Africa to now learn, and it's all, all through, through robotics. And within the WRO side, so now we're, we're talking World Robot Olympiad on the back side of the international competition. Um, you're right, I'm a head judge there, where I'm one of three what we call category head judges. My role is basically to interpret the rules to all of the teams, make sure that coaches understand uh, make sure that our judging panels are judging correctly. If there's problems, it all comes through to me and my uh, two colleagues. And we work with judges all around the world. So the problem we had this year is because it's now online, we're working in every single time zone. So I was up for, I had about nine hours of sleep over four days, um, making, sure that our, <laughs> yeah, yeah, making sure that our judges were judging all of these teams correctly at the, at the same times, at the appropriate times. We had issues with teams having to submit videos online. So there you're talking about video quality. Not everybody has the same kind of equipment. So mm. we had a team in Hungary that was having their grandmother film in their basement. Sure. And then you have a team in Russia that's filming in one of the biggest engineering universities in the world with an entire engineering team behind them. So you have to judge these children in the same way. Mm. And the everything behind it technologically wise was 
incredible for me to see. We use Discord as one of our main mm. um, communications within the judging panel. And it was great to see all these judges sitting in the different voice channels and mm. different text channels posting their questions. Mm. Um, as soon as rules start, just to give you an idea of how hectic things can get, as soon as a rule is released, I had about 56 emails sitting in my inbox waiting for me, um, all in about 20 minutes of the rule being released. And this is people from all around the world messaging you. Um, you've got guys in Canada, guys in India, Russia. It's is this to define the rules? Um, it's to clarify some of the rules. So what, what happens in regular is there's a surprise rule that the children don't know, and that gets released five minutes before the competition. And then they have to try and program and build with, with wow. that specific rule okay. in mind. And each kid is sitting at home, isolated, doing their thing. Wow. Yeah, the, I, there were children um, in the one category, the open category, which is the, the theme, they have to do an interview. And one of the children from, uh, I'm not sure which country, but they were in hospital at the time with COVID. Sure. And they and tried competed? to get, and competed. Wow. They got a tablet through to them somehow, and they were able to sit there in their hospital bed and do Not, do a, their not a medical tablet, a tablet. No, 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 I, a, I'm a not pad. sure. But I think both maybe. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay. And how did, how did, how did uh, the South African team do? So the team, they, because it's their first year, I think that they had, and I'm sure they'll tell you, they had some technical difficulties. But they came 43rd out of um, the 54 teams. But that's at the international competition. The, yeah. the best in the There's world. There's MIT students it's, there. Yeah, it's yeah. the guys who have all kinds of support. Mm. But yeah, 53rd at, at the international out of 54. But, I uh, 43rd, sorry. But they came in the top seven, I mean, they competed against over 7,000 teams worldwide. So they can say that they held 43rd out of 7,000 7, plus teams. Oh, that's incredible. Well, I can't wait to meet these guys um, and show you their robot. Um, and uh, yeah, can I name the robot? I think they have a name for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so that's it from me um, for now in the studio, in the main studio. We'll um, show you the, the, the kids. Duncan, um, from my side, I just want to say thanks very much. And um, I, I, I know you, like many of us, are looking forward to uh, physical events um, uh, opening up soon so we can all um, uh, spit on each other and have fun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I know that, the, the, that uh, that's when people will really, really start flourishing um, because it's, it's in that communal environment that uh, uh, people are sharing ideas yeah. and, 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 and that is where a lot of the crunching takes place and, and you need a physical event mm -hmm. for, for that. So we're looking forward to seeing that and obviously during the course of next year we're going to bring um, WRO and their events, their live events, going to different schools hopefully. We'll bring that to you and actually bring you right into the action. Yeah, that sounds great. I can't wait for that. That's, That's it for me. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers everybody. All right, so now it's meet the robot time. Uh, Shanley, Paige, and Richard, uh, this is your robot. Uh, what's its name? Um, it's easy to make spares. <laughs> okay. Well, okay what is, uh, tell us about your experience at the WRO. Um, during the competition, it was a lot of fun. It was challenging at times, but we learned quite a lot. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. And do it again? Um, yes. It's a How long have you been doing this for? Oh, most of the year. No, no, no. When did you start doing robotics and coding? Oh, um, two to three years ago. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Tell us about yourself. Um, I've been doing WRO for about, four, this is my fifth year doing it. Yeah. I've been doing it since grade five. Yeah. Um, I have never gone through the Nationals, but this year was my lucky year yeah. that I got through. And I even got luckier to get through the Internationals with a really good team. Oh, that's awesome, man. What's your, what's your robot able to do here? What, what, can you show us what it can? Can you let it, let it loose on this table? It's broken on <laughs> I know this is not quite the, uh, the task at hand, but, uh, you know. So obviously this robot is fitted with various sensors. It's supposed to do certain things. Um, you can program it to uh, see the edge of the table and to stop before and not just fall over. I see it's got little arms which was supposed to pick something up and yeah, place yes, it. Yes. A color detection and that kind of thing as well? Or, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, cool. 
Right, well, it looks amazing. Um, I, I wish I had kids uh, your age now that could be involved in, in, in this stuff. Uh, this, is, this is super super geeky, super exciting for me, and I, I can't thank you for, for showing us your, your robot. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to wish you all the best for 2022. Um, I'm sure you're going to do really, really well, right? Hopefully you'll be able to you know, have face-to-face -face events, right? Yes. Cool. All right, cool. That's it from us.